i hope uh, the screen is clear and i'm audible so uh, yes sir you are audible address, yeah yeah the role of addressing in the wood composites and formaldehyde emission parameters uh wood composites as we know are increasingly gaining a strong foothold in panel and modular construction related uh, and related material segments uh one such uh, main advancement which may strike us is uh, the development of the fiber frame roof by basf corporation as you can see uh it was initially introduced in 2007 in our uh, uh, all over the world it was introduced by daimler ag of germany they introduced it in the in the benz e class uh, uh, automobiles uh, the the sunroof was made with uh, uh, natural fiber uh, mat component uh, having about 25 to 28% of bas of uh, acrylate based resins which was formerly three and single component water based resins uh it had uh, an advantage as uh, it had the advantage of uh, overall component weight reduction which is key to you know modern automobile uh, overall efficiency uh basic understanding of how an adhesive works uh, this aspect uh, is is of uh, very key significance because adhesive performance is not a single science it's a highly complicated science with uh, it can be called as a combination of sciences uh, adhesive strength is defined Uh, as mechanically as the force required to pull apart two substrates bonded together the mechanical strength depends on the primary and secondary chemical bonds interlocking of polymer chains in the adhesive uh, wood and adhesive wood interface so both chemical and mechanical aspects of uh, bond strength as well as the interrelation of the two factors are equally significant and uh, because adhesive strength is a measurement of failure the process of identifying the failure determines where the local stresses exceed the bond strength under specific test conditions for various uh, you know operative uh, uh, studies of a product uh, understanding the bond assembly uh, uh, see understanding the bond assembly requires uh, knowledge of both chemistry and mechanics uh, because often strength of bonded assembly is discussed only in terms of addition uh, which is actually not so because a lot of lots of other uh, forces external internal forces stress forces and the forces of expansion contraction also involved uh, between an adhesive uh, between an adhesive and the substrate uh, which uh, define the performance of the bonded assembly so in this regard uh, an appreciation of rheology material science organic chemistry polymer science and mechanics uh, a combination of these an appreciation of a combination of these factors uh leads to a better understanding of the factors controlling performance of bonded assembly uh an adhesive joint failure as uh, the ASTM standard D907 mentions part 11 uh joint failure is uh, it is the locus of fracture uh, occurring in the in an adhesively bonded joint resulting in a loss of load carrying capacity the load carrying can be with regard to structural non structural semi structural applications so you know this uh, failure is divided into cohesive substrate and interface failures uh, where the cohesive failure is the is the actual uh, failure of the bulk of the adhesive substrate failure is the failure of the substrate uh, wood in this mat in this case and the interface failure happens where the properties of both the bulks the bulk of wood and bulk of adhesive join and uh, interface is actually a switch between both of the uh a component the substrate and the adhesive uh, joints this layer in this picture you can see you know on both sides the bulk of wood and uh, center you can see the bulk of adhesive and you can see the uh, complicated interface layer and uh, some of the common physical forces acting on an adhesive joint are tensile shear and torsion as we know and uh, you know most of these physical factors decide the um the uh, joint performance uh, adhesive joint performance and uh, as you can see there are a lot of lot of variables involved in uh, adhesive uh, adhesive usage and the process uh, variables with uh, in in respect of resins in respect of wood in respect of the process used uh, by using a certain uh, wood species and resins and also the service factor the opera operative uh the, the operational life of the product the operational conditions of the product like uv resistance biological resistance heat and flame resistances uh, moisture environment high hydrolysis resistance 
and uh, many of the mechanical and physical properties. So there are there are a combination of factors, it's a huge permutation and combination when we talk about composites uh, to decide on the appropriate resins and the appropriate wood species and uh, you know, how to interlink all these factors together to arrive at a particular uh, operative uh, life durability of a particular composite product. Uh, as we know, wood composite may consist of different varieties of inputs uh, of different sizes. Uh, and uh, you know uh, the physical, mechanical, and process behaviors differ within a spa same species as uh, we have as we try to use different dimensions of uh, wood raw materials uh, such as chips, flakes, long flakes, strands, lumber, uh, penny, wood floor, etc. Uh, talking about the adhesive used in wood composites, formaldehyde resins remain one of the most significant uh, and most widely used resins for uh, reasons very obvious uh, you know, the the price factors uh, economy factors and the expertise which workers have uh, gained over the years of using formaldehyde resins so most mostly used by formaldehyde and uh, with a slight addition of melamine urea and urea melamine formaldehyde uh, uh, is the most consumed uh, adhesive as far as good composites are concerned Followed by PF, melamine formaldehyde, phenol, solutional formaldehyde. As far as isocyanate resins are concerned, you have the polymeric MDI, you have the emulsion polymer isocyanate, which are two components. Then we have what are called the white glues as the vinyl acetate emulsion used mainly in furniture industries, epoxies, mixed blended resins. Nowadays, we have a lot of mixed blends uh, uh, such as PMDI, uh, uh, a slight amount of PMDI being introduced into urea formaldehyde resins to improve various uh, resistant properties. Then we have the hot melts, ethylene vinyl, EVA, ethylene vinyl acetate, thermoplastic polyurethane, polyethylene based, acrylic based hot melts. Then bioadhesives are gaining a lot of significance these days, uh, especially the soy related bioadhesives um, are uh, gaining acceptance worldwide as uh, a good replacement for formaldehyde and uh, even isocyanate based adhesives. A lot of works are also going on on uh, uh, bioadhesives and bioadhesive blends, uh, partial replacements of phenols. All the kinds of works are going on at a big level all over the world. Identification of material input. Some of the significant factors affecting the identification of wood remain the density of board, type of finish uh, required in the board, then the pricing constraints. Pricing constraints also involve the compressibility factors uh, of the various. Uh, inputs such as chips and uh, uh, particles that go into a composite then the standards compliances and the finally the market acceptance so we we may have so many different materials with which we can make a lot of composites but finally the market has to accept them um, uh, because there are also a lot of psychological factors uh, uh, which take part in a final decision of purchase from uh, uh, from the part of the consumer too and identification of adhesive used in wood composites uh, consisting of 2 to 10% of wood composites and yet uh, adhesives remain the key cost input uh, into, into wood composites. Then the availability consistency of raw materials um, uh, such as you know when you consider bio, bio adhesives uh, we need to look at the future sustainable availability of the raw materials such as soya, cornstarch and all those things. Uh, because a lot of agricultural lands are also involved to develop uh, these raw materials. Then the machinery and equipment, the process, the process should be easy, handleable, workable, and uh, it should be it should be uh, easy for the workers. And uh, the application, uh, which is a key uh, factor of uh, uh, adhesive identification, such as interior, semi-exterior, exterior, non-structural, structural. Then the process safety. Again, the standards compliance, these days standards have become uh, mandatory almost all over the world. So it is better to always start uh, a wood composite uh, idea and concept with uh, standards compliances in mind. Then again, the final marketability of the end product uh, as far as the consumer and the end user is concerned. Uh, we look at the formaldehyde emissions from wood composites. Formaldehyde, uh, you know, first uh, formaldehyde was linked with leukemia during a 2003 study by the U.S. National Cancer Institute, uh, based on more than 25,000 workers being uh, 
uh, observed over the period of uh, uh, 40 years, uh, where people exposed to 0.1 to 4 ppm uh, were uh, uh, supposed to have a higher uh, possibility of uh, getting leukemia. A second investigation by 2010 conducted by very well-known uh, toxicologist uh, uh, Lo Ping Zhang at the University of California, Berkeley, strongly supported the previous 2003 study. Uh, and uh, she particularly examined 100 workers split between uh, factories which do not use formaldehyde and factories which use formaldehyde. And finally came to the conclusion that uh, uh, the, fact, the, expo the, the uh, workers who were exposed to the factory using formaldehyde between 0.6 to 2.5 ppm levels had fewer uh, red blood cells and white blood cells in them and also a higher prevalence of DNA mutations in the blood stem cells. Uh, and so in later in 2010, the uh, IARC, which is the uh, Cancer Research Center associated with uh, WHO, uh, voted to classify formaldehyde as a cause of leukemia officially. Um, even though formaldehyde is a very tiny molecule, it, it packs a real punch uh, with it. Uh, and it is also being related to a rare nasal cancer at uh, consistent um, exposure of uh, above 4 ppm concentration levels, which is usually um, uh, a problem with uh, embalmers and medical technicians who have to work uh, continuously with uh, formaldehyde too. Uh, but yet many scientists across the world, including those of uh, the American Chemistry Council, consider uh, the available human data as uh, basically weak and inconsistent. So as these arguments continue, uh, the fact remains that uh, the compliance aspect in formaldehyde uh, related resins, the use of formaldehyde resins in wood composites uh, still remain. So the compliance aspect has to be uh, definitely taken care of when we manufacture products. So uh, the WHO mandates that uh, for all wood composites and uh, plywood, they mandate uh, a maximum emission of 100 microgram per cubic meter, which is uh, established by the ISO uh, chamber method, then CARB uh, phase two and uh, EPA, that is the United States Environment Protection Agency. Uh, these days CARB P2 is very widely popular uh, as uh, uh, along with E0 uh, jargon as the formaldehyde emission standard. So they have for hardwood plywood, they have uh, kept a limit of 0 0.05 ppm uh, in, the, in the ASTM large chamber. Uh, for, particle, for particle board, the phase two emission uh, mandates a maximum limit of 0 0.09 ppm for MDF 0 0.1 ppm. Then we have the even standards of hardwood, uh, plywood, and particle board, uh, which uh, limits 0 0.12 milligram per cubic meter in the, the European uh, chamber method. We have the even uh, MDF, uh, which is uh, uh, tested with the ISO perforator method. Uh, with a maximum limit of 8 milligram per 100 gram of oven dry board. Then we have the E0, uh, uh, which uh, uses various methods, including uh, the uh, European large chamber, as well as the ISO desiccator test, where it has a, a numerical value limit of 0.5 milligram per liter. Then we have a very stringent uh, Japanese F4 star standard, which mandates uh, a limit of 0.3 milligram per liter uh, as per the GIS uh, desiccator test. Uh, recently, uh, the, uh, there was a horizontally harmonized uh, European standard, uh, which has been uh, talked about and uh, started to be implemented since 2018. It is called the EN 16516 uh, standard and uh, Germany was the first to, to uh, have implemented it. Uh, just like uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Natsab said earlier, these days we have the interior, our indoor air environments uh, having less air exchanges. So earlier chamber, earlier European chamber had an air exchange volume of one, factor one. And uh, 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 you know, considering the new indoor uh, interior designs and architecture where the air exchange uh, rate is less uh, because almost all the uh, indoors are uh, uh, have a closed structure these days. So they uh, found out that uh, with half of the air exchange rate, half volume of air exchange rate, and uh, by 
uh, multiplying the factor of uh, European Chamber with uh, by two, uh, there should be a maximum limit of uh, 0.1 parts per million. So, and uh, some seven or eight other countries have joined uh, along with Germany in uh, trying to um, implement the EN uh, 16516 uh, harmonized European standards. Overall, the Japanese standards F4 star remains the most stringent uh, as far as numerical values of test uh, analysis is concerned, with a value of 0.3 milligram per liter. Uh, the approved CARB test, uh, if, we, if we have to export our products to North America, the CARB and EPA tests are, uh, uh, have to be mainly followed. And the compliance tests are the ASTM large chamber and the ASTM small chamber. Then we have the small scale uh, quality control test methods in which uh, the ASTM D5582 desiccator takes a uh, uh, high amount of significance along with the small chamber. And uh, coming to the factory methods of uh, production control, quality control method, um, the, the gas analysis, ISO gas analysis, the ISO perforator, uh, the, the dynamic micro chambers, as well as the Japanese desiccator test uh, are, the, are among the approved list of production quality control tests. In this, uh, you know, it is important to um, note, it is important to understand that the um, CARB uh, panel has approved uh, the gas analysis or the desiccator method, which are easily uh, doable for the hardwood plywood. Uh, after the JIS desiccator method is, uh, uh, is approved for all the manufactured wood composites, whereas for, uh, uh, by using the perforator test uh, in our labs, um, the, uh, a 2016 uh, approval letter suggests that it is approved, the perforator tests uh, for production quality control are approved only for particle boards and MDF. Uh, so we may have to think of a universal uh, production quality control standard which may be uh, acceptable worldwide uh, so that we don't have any confusion about different kinds of wood composites. Uh, the use of production quality control tests for different kinds of wood composites. So in this regard, the GIS, the Japanese desiccator method, uh, may be thought of as a single universal standard production quality control method and may be uniformly considered for, uh, 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 for implementation by all the factories. Uh, as far as European tests are concerned, we, we have the new uh, European uh, chamber that is 16516 which has been recently uh, implemented along with the old chamber. When we use the 717 chamber, we have to, as I mentioned earlier, we have to factor the result uh, by a multiplication factor of two in order to achieve the uh, result as per the new harmonized standards. And uh, for production control, two C tests, they uh, suggest uh, the gas analysis and the perforator methods where the gas analysis has been uh, approved for raw plywood boards and coated boards and the perforator method as suggested earlier for raw chip boards and raw fiber boards. Uh, just I was, uh, was talking about the universal production control. Uh, it may be appropriate that uh, uh, as far as the Indian uh, context is concerned, uh, uh, probably uh, I would like to suggest that the Japanese desiccator method may be uh, considered for implementation as a universal standard because uh, it is widely accepted for all uh, kinds of manufactured composites, uh, including plywood, particle boards, chip boards, OSBs, uh, even for wooden laminate floorings, desiccator method is considered. And also, this Japanese desiccator method has been harmonized, that is the European desiccator, the ISO uh, uh, desiccator test, 12460 part 4 desiccator, ISO desiccator, test has been harmonized with Australian, Japanese, and New Zealand standards. So probably in India too, we could uh, try to have a desiccator test which may be equivalent to the uh, Japanese uh, 1460 desiccator method. And we may organize skill trainings towards its implementation in the industry sector so that our country may remain at par with worldwide formaldehyde emission compliances. So with this, I uh, would like to wind up my discussion. Thank you and Jai Hind.